Um, yeah, I appreciate, uh, first of all, I, I want to thank the, uh, uh, the Packard Foundation for, for putting this uh, briefing together and all the uh, speakers at, at this uh, event. I mean, this is a very important uh, well, I say issue. It's multiple issues uh, that to deal with. And as we're moving forward with the Affordable Care Act and really transforming in some way, you know, trying to transform our health care system, we need to be sure that children and the unique needs of children are not forgotten or glossed over. Um, you know, the, 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 one of the challenges is that um, um, children uh, are generally, statistically, more healthy. Um, they also consume a very small fraction of the health care dollar. Uh, so one would think, so the advantage is, is that it should be easier to do because there's fewer cost pressures and other things. But the flip side of the problem is that when people say, well, what are big problems? We got, a, it's really the adult long-term care, et cetera, because that's where we're spending all the money. And so it is very important that we try to keep children in front when it comes to the policymakers and saying, you know, we can't just take a system, design it for what, how it works for the adults and say, you know, we're just going to then apply it to everybody, including kids. And so uh, that's part of uh, what, why we wanted to do, uh, have this briefing to, 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 uh, better, to, define, to better define this and also to help set, help, uh, set the stage for, I think, f uh, further work uh, in being sure that as we're moving forward with the Forward Care Act, but also just you know, where, where should, what should children's health care coverage, uh, the children, delivery of children's health care look like in, in, in the state of California, uh, especially in the context of the different things that are happening in the health care system. And that's, uh, that's going to be a very important work uh, that's going to be an ongoing piece. Uh, in the same way that we're going to, the, the whole transformation of the healthcare system of the ACA is going to be an ongoing uh, piece of work as well. And as the first pediatrician and only pediatrician ever to serve in the California legislature, certainly that's something very important to me personally, but I also know that it's very important to all of you as well as people who both either, uh, both as parents uh, as well as uh, uh, people who uh, spend your, devote your careers to taking care of children. Uh, as, as professionals or in other roles as well. So again, thank you so much for being here. And again, I want to thank the Packard Foundation again and Dr. Alexander and all the speakers for, uh, for sharing. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing the material and I see you have a videotape so I can catch up later. So thank you. <laughs> Questions from the audience? Okay, yeah. Children's Hospital Open, the Human Clinic Council of California, and Children's Hospice of Care, Care Coalition. I would like to echo the comments of Dr. Weiss um, that before we embark upon any major changes here in the state, that we um, in particular protect the CCS program, and that we move very cautiously and thoughtfully as we make any changes um, to those vulnerable patients. Um, I know that as the state is looking to expand medical managed care, as we embark upon the ACA and cover California, we have to be very thoughtful and careful about this population. Um, we need to make sure that networks are in place. We need to make sure that it's very seamless as these children hit age 21. Their hemophilia doesn't go away, nor does their cystic fibrosis or their sickle cell disease. We want to make sure that as we um, protect CCS and transition those kids, that we do the same with GHPP as well. And I think it was an excellent presentation today. Everything you have in here is just really uh, terrific, top notch, and appreciate it. And I hope we can get these copies to the budget subcommittees. Mm -hmm. Be happy to help you, Mr. Program. Um, one of the things, though, I also um, would urge you to do because it is important to um, you know the CCS program has a long and impressive history, uh, and uh, so. Um, Certainly, the first instinct is to say, "Don't touch it yet." Um, but I, I also think that um, it, just to be frank, it's like the last droplet of fee-for-service medical left. I mean, the, the winds have been are blowing in the opposite direction, and uh, and that what why I'm, the reason I'm saying that is is that I think we need to. Um, and the CCS program, it, w and I'm a v strong supporter. In fact, I authored a bill to do the last carve-out extension. But because I did that, I also got, got a sense of where different players are, that we need to also be sure uh, that we present a vision uh, or a picture of where we want 
the healthcare system to go. And that's why I said, you know, what does the healthcare system for children going to look like? And the reason I say that is, is that if the if if, if all if what all we try to do and is say every time they want to do something, the CCS program said, well, do it, you know, don't do it, or just do it very slowly. Uh, we saw what happened with healthy families. Um, so uh, and you know, they showed up in one governor's budget, and sort of took it, and the next one, it's like do it or else. Um, and uh, we didn't spend a lot of time in between those two budgets saying, you know what, we know somebody's proposing to get rid of it, what are we going to do in between to say, well, this is where we want to go? And so I do, th I do uh, so certainly when the fight comes, you know, fight, you know, fight for, but I also say that we also, we, I, I wouldn't wait to start saying, well, where are we going to go? That doesn't necessarily mean giving up the CCS program, but how, but where, you know, how does that fit into this larger picture of how we want children's health care to be delivered and where, and how does that fit in and what maybe some changes we would, might want to make to the program that would actually move it forward in ways that still meet all the criteria you mentioned. So I, I do, so I guess my, my, my main, my main message is, is that we're going to fight for the CCS program. I'm certainly happy to carry another carve out bill when the old carve out, but I also say that there's only so long, we've been doing that for some, you know, several cycles and we can only do that for so long without trying to say, you know, how does that fit into this larger picture of how we want children's health care delivery to look like and then get buy-in from a broad coalition and also hopefully the administration about this, this is something that we're all bought into in the direction we're going. So uh, I, 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 that's part of why I want people to start th to think about as well is that uh, uh, we, we, we don't wait until you know, the final threat comes uh, and then say, well, now we're going to start having those discussions. We've got to have them now. So. Great. Well, thank you all for being here. Thank you to all these wonderful panelists for uh, being here, and uh, we'll hopefully be back in touch. <laughs>